striking landscape of Washington state comes with the risk of potentially devastating geological risks like volcanoes and earthquakes. The U.S. Geological Survey just built a new station in a very remote spot to monitor those risks. Come on, meteorologist George Waldenberger joined them on a mission into the mountains. The destructive flow of volcanic debris, mud and water unleashed by the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens destroyed more than 200 homes. These lahars, as they're called, pose similar risks on another active volcano nearby. Mount Rainier. During its next eruption, it could send a mix of volcanic debris and water right down the White River toward communities downstream. To protect against this, the U.S. Geological Survey is installing some of the first sensors of their kind on this part of the mountain. These unobstructed views yield unobstructed measurements. It's an ideal site for sensors. The challenge is getting equipment up to this remote location. It takes a team, a caravan, beginning with a 2,500-foot climb up the service road at Crystal Mountain. Up steep slopes, over rocky roads, past sharp drop-offs, through tight turns, the gravel ends. It's now on foot. Oh, that's Mount Rainier. That's they're looking at the Emmons Glacier. At 6,800 feet, it's grueling, hauling cables and pickaxes. So this is the spot right here. You're coming up on it. We find that ideal site where this team of geologists, <laughs> Kat, Hannah, and Craig, dig three trenches, six inches deep, 80 feet long. Yeah. Cable run will come up through here. Wes, a seismologist, maps out the smartest locations to connect sensors. And it'll work up around here. That will link to a large, intricate centerpiece, which we've been waiting for all day. It's probably best to bring the hut in from the south, moving north, coming from downhill to uphill. Downhill to uphill, good copy. It takes a helicopter to bring in the hut. This will be the nucleus of the monitoring station. At 600 pounds, whirling in the wind, landing the hut is tricky. Five feet. They'll wrangle this massive structure into place, high on the mountain. On the ground. As the helicopter hovers above, like geologic cowboys. My bad. Sturdy enough to withstand the winter, even buried in the snow, this hut will house power systems, communications, running all winter long. But in the summertime, solar panels will charge the batteries. What can be carried in must be flown in. This chopper is carrying a sling with 800 pounds of batteries in it. The solar power comes to here. Connecting three infrasound sensors. This is literally just a fancy microphone. An erupting volcano or flowing lahar generates vibrations or seismic waves in the ground, but they'll also emit vibrations in the air below the frequency which we can hear. Those infrasound waves can travel great distances. These sensors from beneath these screens and with their staggered placement will receive those infrasound waves at different times, triangulating to the direction of the leading edge of the debris flow. It's gonna go right past us here. A tool for emergency managers to help warn communities down the White River. Green water, outlying parts of like Enumclaw and Buckley, these are the first on this side of the volcano, and that's going to bring us a new capability in this area that really, frankly, is going to help us reduce our amount of false alarms. An effort worth the work for when the mighty Tahoma erupts next. George Waldenberger, Como News. The USGS actually installed five new stations this month on the northeast and east sides of Mount Rainier. Similar sensors are already in place in other areas where there is a higher risk for debris flows.